All right, Freedom Fiends, it's your boy Nima, and uh, I'm broadcasting live here from Austin, but we actually have added a new city uh, today. We are also broadcasting from Libertopia, or rather, our good friend Ross is on the line for us in Libertopia. How you doing, man? Andrew. I'm Andrew, and, and, and we're going to be talking, talking to a bunch of people today, aren't we, Michael? Or not. Uh, can anybody hear anybody? Yeah, I got everybody you. here. Everybody, okay, cool. Uh, well, how's Libertopia going? Fantastic. It's the second one for for me, and I think for Drew, and I think it's the third one in history. Um, I think the crowd is bigger than last year, and the weather is great. Uh, there was a bit of moisture the first night, but um, it's fine. It's been nice by the bay right here. Now, why hold a, a an event called Libertopia that's uh, you know liberty minded? In a place like California, can can you explain to me the understanding behind that? Yeah, seriously. Um, I think just because you, um, okay, it's at a very nice hotel. It's like a, a Hawaiian style hotel, Humphreys by the Bay, um, where they have like legit performers here, like uh, like Chris Isaac or you know like real acts that you come and see at this venue, courtyard style. Um, and the hotel is like 150 bucks a night. So a lot of people that are coming to this event are just here for the day. And they're staying at like a Ramada or whatever. And a mm -hmm. lot of people actually just live in the area. So I guess because uh, like, you're in Southern California, 10 million people. And comparing it to Porkfest, um, it's a very different crowd. Um, there are a bunch of agorists here, like Jillian from Stateless Suites and Grimm's Phoenix and Don't Try to Meme and, and Coplock. Um, but there are a lot of um, academics, a lot of tables with books on them, books and pamphlets. Uh -huh. We brought Ew, the color. We bring, books. Yeah, and I'm selling. Mm. I'm selling. I'm selling. Uh, you know, coffee and, and things like that. Um, Dude, your coffee looks amazing. Like coffee thanks. and silver. Yeah. That's like where I want to be. Coffee and silver. How, right? Wait, wait. How can coffee look amazing? I don't know, man. Yeah. Oh, pictures with, of with it. cream. Well, I, uh, with the I I'm selling. The, I'm selling the coffee for two bucks a cup, and then for an extra buck, you get whipped cream and Ghirardelli on it. So it's the upsell. Ooh. For thirty ah, okay, cents. A, for thirty cents a product, you get. I charge you an extra buck. You should okay, you should so. sell Goldschlager type coffee like with gold flakes in it so Sprinkle people gold can flakes. people <laughs> could poo gold. <laughs> yeah, uh, g give it up to the San Diego Harbor. Yeah, no, well, so that's why I think that Libertopia, even though it's, it's an expensive festival, um, if you stay here and do everything here, um, I think it is appealing to people who uh, are like you know maybe the closet millionaires. There's a few you know heavy hitters. Closet millionaires. In. Yeah, from, from okay. so it's California. You know, you got a lot of forward-looking people, forward-looking businessmen, um, and that's different than Porkfest, which is like, you know, in the woods. Um, not to say it's 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 grungy, but it's just way open-ended, more of a festival atmosphere. So two different festivals. So is everyone walking around like uh, open carrion and shooting crocodile? No, not here. No, um, and I even um, for this Austrian cafe, part of the Silver Dime Card booth where I'm selling the coffee. I uh, was going to sell some like Austrian Cigarillo small cigars and at Ooh. the last minute I instead of a dollar each I put um, complimentary with purchase just because I didn't want to bring in the California tobacco Nazis in here. Yeah so. man. It's a weird place for Liberty Festival but I guess California they need it the most you know. Yeah well Jeff Berwick uh, and the Dollar Vigilante crew they're here. Um, I subscribe to that newsletter. It's mostly about um, expatriation, getting out of the empire with your money and your self intact. And like he already wrote a blog entry. He they tried to go downtown to party, and it was just so uncivilized. Like it was last call. And I've been out in the Gaslamp District of downtown San Diego, and uh, last call, a bunch of uh, jockey types out on the street, angry, last call, drunk, and they just um, didn't like the atmosphere, which. You know, San Diego is, I would, you could call it the conservative part of Southern California just because of all the military money flowing through this place. Yeah, were they military um, people, the ones that were messing with you? No, not not me. I, I wasn't with the, his crew. Um, but, yeah, it's, it definitely rubs off on the other part of the population. Even if you're not ex, ex Marine or ex Navy, you probably like kind of cheer for the te home team, so to speak. Uh -huh. A lot of these guys at the bars here. So. That's what you're dealing with in San Diego is it's the, the so-called conservative part of SoCal. Um, there's a lot of military money here. Just across the, from the hotel is uh, Coronado, Coronado Island, which is you know uh, a big 
the most prime real estate in Southern California, which, and then it's paved over, and uh, Chinook helicopters are taking off and drowning out the speakers here. Uh. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what's a little bit like um, bothersome is that yeah, there's these nice houses and nice boats, but I just feel like how much of that is dirty money, you know? Who, who have you gotten feel? to hear speak so far? Has, has anybody blown you away with their their brain yet? With um, I have not been attending the breakout sessions, which that's simply the small room surrounding the courtyard, um, mm. just because I've been vending. But the main stage where the main speakers are, are the ones that are in the keynotes. And yeah, Doug Casey's been honored this year for Lifetime Achievement Award. And he, uh, he spoke, uh, and Stefan Manu is the MC. He's uh, keeping it light and lively and, and uh, sarcastic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Doug, Doug Casey, uh, yeah, his keynote was pretty cool. Um, it was basically about uh, coming to terms that um, you know, you're not going to convince everybody. Explain, don't convince. Um, and uh, you know, America is, a, is not a place; it's an idea. And so he's, you know, he's a he's a globe trotter. He's got the means to do it. Um, so he uh, got a lot of perspective around the world that you know, uh, it's not just in America people that love freedom. There's a lot of other countries that um, they instinct instinctively don't trust or really even respect the police or the government. They yeah. know it's a gang. The trouble is, in America, they pledge allegiance to the gang. The rest of the world knows that they live <laughs> under gangs. So, you know, maybe it's better to live in a place where maybe it's a second or third world country and they know that, no, these guys are legitimate. We just pay them off and they go away. Yeah, yeah. Was uh, was Doug Casey pushing uh, his Argentina property on people or uh, yeah, was, he, w- was he trying to convince people to do that? Yeah, and I've looked into it. Um, and that he, right off the bat, though, he said, of course, it's, you know, you, you pay probably 100000 for a lot and then another 100000 to build something on it. It's not for everybody. But well, that, uh, that's for, not even that much more expensive than doing something here in the States. I mean, if you I, build your own house on a lot, you know, in a more yeah. expensive part of the country, it's, that's pretty comparable. Yeah, and uh, it's on a it's on a, a, a vineyard, and uh, you get you get your own personal cut of the bottles of the yield, and then whatever the yield that you oh, really? take, you get sold on the open market. You get a dividend of that. So very nice, cool model. Nice. And I think so like, the, like an anar- anarchistic version of people getting dividends in Alaska. But <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Um, and it's in northern Argentina. It's very hard to get to, but it's it reminds me of like Sedona. I have not been there. I've seen a lot of pictures. Um, it's the Tuscany of of Argentina. And that's what he says, too, is like Argentina is freaking messed up. Christina de Kirchner is an idiot. There's like so many capital controls every 10 years that it's just laughable. But and I kind of I think it was a P.J. O'Rourke quote. Not that I'm like a big fan of him, but he said, like, thank thank God you're not getting the government you're paying for. And down there in some of these screwed up countries, yes, they're overtly more socialist. But they don't have the methods to carry it out like they do in the U.S. So right. that's something. And to I, th- look I think at. you're right about the people not giving them as much legitimacy as they do here. Like, I feel like yeah. people here can't can't ever break out of the concept that you have to have this group of people doing this, and it doesn't matter how much evil they do. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he talked about um, and uh, Jeff Borwick and some of these other expatriation guys. They say, you know. Don't maybe go down to some of these um, millionaire resort places where the millionaires are trying to escape um, socialism. Some of these golf gulches, and you know, if you know how to play guitar, some of these millionaires' children want some private guitar lessons. Maybe they want to learn about Austrian economics. Teach them do a Rothbard course, and then live in the village uh, five miles down the road on three hundred bucks a month. You know, just think about what's a service. What can you sell to some of these people? Um, so that's very inspiring. Um, and then the other parts of the festival, um, there's a lot of just fine tuning late night discussions and stuff, but, um, just like pork fest is by late night discussion. Does, uh, Stefan Molyneux party it up with y'all and, you know, knock a few shots back or what's going on with that? No, he, he, I have not (laughs) seen him. I've not seen him walking around after sundown. Um, they had their uh, VIP sovereign awards banquet. Twenty-five, no, seventy-five dollars a plate to honor Doug Casey and and some of the other uh, guys. Wait, we were joking. <laughs> we we were drinking in the courtyard, like, oh, we're gonna go make a ninety-nine percent sign and go bang on the window. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that Ross, we're Ross, we're going into a commercial here, and we're gonna come back and have someone else on. Thank you very much yeah. for uh, helping us out there and for coming on the the fiends. Okay, guys, check you later. Bye, Worms. Nice. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With 
brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features and corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from mother's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe Want to search porn in private? Or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. MetroPipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as $7.50 a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. Fiends. Freedom Fiends. We, get, we got more from uh, Libertopia for you here. Yeah, we are live from Libertopia here today, even though we're not there. We're uh, live courtesy of Drew, the Silver Dime Card Guy, and Ross, the Silver Dime Card Guy from uh, Don't Tread on Meme, who make Freedom Fiends Dime Cards, by the way. So uh, if you're at Libertopia listening to the radio, I'd say, uh, what are you doing listening to the radio, man? You're at Libertopia. So... We got yeah, a guy go out on there here. And buy some fiends buttons. <laughs> yeah, we got a guy in here right now, Jonathan Logan. Who, uh, Jonathan? Did you get some fiends buttons? You're going to get some for doing this interview. Yeah, absolutely. I okay, cool. <laughs> uh, he, he's a buddy of mine. We talked before. He's a computer security expert, and he's speaking there. And uh, the Jonathan Logan is the reason that I have a Linux computer now. He talked me into it, and I'm I'm taking baby steps with it, but I have one. It works. So I've you know set it up to surf the web and check my email and. Uh, I actually used it the other day when I was having a problem with um, my stats and I was trying to compare the AW stats to the actual stats and to open the zip file on all the actual stats, I had to turn on my Linux computer. So it actually uh, was useful for something other than what I could do on other computers so far. So you already thank profited you. from it. <laughs> yeah, thank cool. You. Thank you, Very Jonathan. Cool. Yeah, it costs 50 bucks for the computer and it's you know runs as fast as my new computers almost with Linux on it. Right. Yeah, Linux is, is like the solution for so many issues out there, and it, it gives you a little bit more freedom and security and flexibility. So the it's thing, a good move. The thing that's funny though to me is that like you know the guy who Richard Stallman, the guy who's probably more responsible for what is commonly called Linux than uh, the guy it's named after, Linus Torvalds. Uh, Richard Stallman is a is an out and out like leftist socialist, you know, liberal, and like right. he invented this thing that's so like libertarian in how it works but he still thinks governments should like enforce goodwill it's weird right right i mean um he always complains about that because it shouldn't really be called linux because linux is just the kernel like the the core of the operating system yeah it's getting his project is the gnu the gnu's not unix um tool chain and all that and he always complains that everyone is talking about linux but not about GNU. And yeah, he, he has a, an interesting and not so compatible uh, political ideology. <laughs> but on the other hand, I mean, he's, he's weird enough to be interesting, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I, I do kind of like him, you know? <laughs> he's, he's cool, but um, I well, would give him I, the keys to my room. I, I, what do you think about his obsession with that, that calling it GNU instead of Linux? I mean, instead of letting the free market, the free market already decided, and the free market already decided that what he calls free software, everyone else calls open source, even though open source is something less free. But you know, there's a free market in words, and he just doesn't want to accept what it has done. Yeah, and and I and I think he doesn't get that many people are really more into the I want it to work, and I don't want to be forced to share thing. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that is that is something, you know. But I understand him, and it's cool, and he can have his opinion. I have a different one that doesn't really matter. I'm an anarchist. I don't have to tell everybody else to live. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. So uh, how's Libertopia? Have you have you spoken yet at Libertopia? Yeah, yeah. Well, we had our 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 talk yesterday, and it was pretty cool. We have maybe twenty, twenty five, thirty people there, and um, it didn't work out that well because it was very stuffed. The talk was too much content for the time, so we really 
uh, flew over the heads of the people, and I was I'm very <laughs> sorry for that, and I have to make a public apology for that. Did you did you film uh, it for YouTube? Is it going to be publicly available? No, absolutely available? not. I mean, you know me by now, and no, there's no recording. Why? Because you're invisible. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. The slides will be online on Shadow Life at CC. Well, what, what, what were you trying to accomplish with the talk? Like, what's the, the kernel of the talk? We had two talks that belong together, and we'll be talking with Frank later, who had the second talk. And his first talk was about uh, freedom and pra- um, theory and practice of black market business. So it was talking about um, informal markets, informal market, uh, business analysis, business calculation, and how to stay secure, you know, how to uh, get rid of the police and how to not open yourself up to raids and, and theft and robbery and stuff like that. And Frank had another talk and he was talking about uh, digital tradecraft, so essentially how to operate in, on the black market digitally over the internet. But if he, somebody, he will talk for himself. If somebody had pulled out a camera and started filming that, uh, would you have stopped them? Someone did. Someone did you did. stop them? Yeah, in, in the fi- first five minutes of the talk, you know, <laughs> the door opened. And the guy came in, you know, and raised his camera, and I said, "Done with the camera, thank you." And he, <laughs> and he was scared and left, I think. So, but it didn't really matter because uh, I'm wearing a Tourex style turban with my face covered right now, <laughs> so you know it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> so, did you give a talk in London at the Bitcoin thing, or did, no, you, uh, did you attend I that? I didn't. I, okay. I attended. Frank, Frank was the one talking in London. Uh. Didn't and our I friend did didn't, our, didn't our friend Cody Wilson, the, the printable gun guy, wasn't he speaking there? Oh yeah, absolutely. But while he was speaking, I had a shit or something. You had a what? I, I was away. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, he's getting a lot of attention. He, uh, I yeah, didn't. Inter- I, I talked him into doing his first interview. He was shy and like, I don't ever want to do interviews. And I talked him into right. it. And now he's doing like five interviews a day for mainstream media. It's kind of cool. Right. Yeah, I'm really sorry that they took his printer away. You know, but nah, he'll he'll get another one. Doug Kate. Well, yeah, if we, get, if we get, I want to interview Doug Casey. If anybody can find him and get him on here today, I'm going to ask him to buy a, pr- a printer for for yeah, uh, that, for that's his, his own printer. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. He's a libertarian millionaire. So, right. Uh, so and tell us, not, we should collect a little more about Libertopia. How is it, and uh, what do you think, and uh, what kind of people are you meeting, and conversations you're having, and stuff? Well, I mean, first thing, Libertopia is like. The South California uh, Freedom, how do you call it, uh, Woodstock Festival? Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so it's kind of fun. You have a lot of very interesting people running around here, many with their own projects. And I spend most of the time so far with not attending talks, but just talking to people. You know, random strangers, so to speak, that are becoming comrades. So um, there's there's so much going on, so much discussion here, and so much you know building friendships and relationships so i mean everyone not here is really missing out ah well that's us we're not there we're missing exactly. out. <laughs> you exactly. got anything else to say before we get someone else on um yes next year you should be here <laughs> okay <laughs> all right man okay thanks John. man take it easy so here we are live from libertopia and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drew yeah. Drew is having a fist fight to determine who the next person is on here. How you doing, Nima? I'm doing good, man. It, uh, yeah, it sounds, it sounds like there's some kind of spanking going on there. They got some aggression going on. Uh, it could be voluntary, you know. Hello. Hey, who's this? Hi, this is Frank. John. This is Frank. Frank. Hey, Frank. How you liking Libertopia? It's pretty cool. Excellent, excellent. So, did you give a talk today about computer security? Uh, yesterday, actually, yes, about digital tradecraft and uh, the need for escrow and the counter economy. Yeah. Uh, are you one of those people who is not a fan of SSL certificates? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> How, what do you think could replace those that would be more uh, free and open and not controlled by one pl- place? Ooh, tough question. Um, yeah, probably some sort of distributed system uh, where you have uh, similar to a web of trust and PGP. Can you speak up a little bit? You're really quiet. I said uh, kind of like a distributed system with um, a web of trust uh, similar to PGP or uh, something like uh, a name coin system. Cool. We're going into a commercial here. Do you want to stick around and talk a little bit after? Sure. All right. Freedom Fiends, live at Libertopia. How you doing, Nima? Good man. 
We gotta go to the break now. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, we should have just left it at that. Yeah, I know. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. It's the Freedom Fiends, live! <laughs> From Libertopia, yeah. it's those darn fiends. Got it. And we got uh, Frank Braun on here. Frank Braun is a internationally known computer security expert, Linux, white hat, hacker kind of guy. How you doing there, Frank? Pretty good, hi. So what are your impressions on uh, Libertopia? Tell us about Libertopia. I mean, I like it's my first time and I liked it a lot. Um, like mostly anarchists here and a very frantic crowd, interesting crowd. So I, I would highly recommend it. Frantic, I like that. That's that's my kind of crowd. Do you consider yourself an anarchist? Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> um, how tell tell us how um how what you do as far as furthering digital security can help to. Um, further people's own personal freedom um, and anarchy itself. I mean, you're probably familiar with, with agorism and crypto anarchy as a concept. So yes. um, we uh, we think that um, yeah, this is a valid, uh, like the most promising approach for more liberty in our lifetime. And so we try to get the tools out into the hands of as many people as possible. And for that reason, we're starting the project ShadowLife.cc this month, where we uh, put on tutorials and theory text and privacy news and teach people who are not IT uh, professionals how to, how to use this stuff and be able to uh, have a, a career in the uh, counter economy, so to speak. What, uh, what do you think of S Silk Road, uh, the, the concept or the, the website where you can uh, ideally sell anything you want to anybody else in the world, you know, a uh, digital free market, a uh, digital agora. Um, what do you think of that? He probably, I mean, he probably invented it. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I mean, would be nice though. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not into drugs myself, but I think it's, it's a perfect example how a black market uh, economy works. So it, they brought together all the technology. Uh, which are necessary for that, and I think it's a uh, yeah, excellent example. If a government tried to ban Silk Road, like there are some U.S. congressmen who want to do something about this horrible problem, like okay, if they passed a law that said, you know, you get a year in prison if you even go on Silk Road and look at it, uh, do you think there'd be a way that most people could get around that without getting caught? Yeah, if, if Tor works correctly and it, it should, then uh, it's kind of hard to tell who is going on Silk Road. Ah, excellent. But but I think um, that the most uh, likely attack will be the Bitcoin system itself. So the governments try to uh, crack down on Bitcoin. Would there be a way to still use Bitcoin if it's cracked down on? Hopefully, yes. How? I mean... They will probably start with attacking the exchanges so that you cannot uh, buy Bitcoin via money, uh, via transfer and stuff like that. Yeah. And then you you would have to switch over to um, over the counter exchanges, meaning you you meet uh, people like face to face and buy Bitcoin for cash. Yep. That's that's what I'm advocating uh, heavily because I think too many people rely on the. Um, on the current exchanges, and that's a very weak point in the in the Bitcoin economy. 
Yeah. It's, how would how would you find somebody to do that? Would would that be an above the board thing? Like you have a an exchange store somewhere or at like a UPS type of store, and you walk in and you hand them a wad of ones, at like twenty dollar, or and and they would convert that to bitcoins. Are you thinking something like that? Or are you thinking you know people? on Craigslist would say, hey, I, I, I can set you up with Bitcoin. Just come to my, my back alley kind of thing. No, more, more people like uh, putting uh, up ads on Craigslist or advertising and, and specialized website. There are already a couple of them, like localbitcoins.com or bitcoinotc.com. Website like that. You can type in your zip code and then you, um, you can you find, find somebody. Yes. Yeah. Or you find, you find you find you find a drug dealer that works out of an alleyway that has a you know a little Android phone and will take Bitcoin on the st- on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you, sh- you should meet up uh, in a back alley. Uh, probably better to meet up in a public place like a Starbucks or something. So that you can <laughs> <laughs> well, you could maybe if Starbucks started taking Bitcoin, what you do is you'd go in and you'd sit down with your drug dealer and buy him like eighty cups of coffee for your weed. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to deal with a drug dealer that's had 80 cups of coffee though it might be dangerous yeah. you buy him a french press and a nice mug or yeah I got, I got a question I got a weird computer question for you here I, I found this site called macminivault.com that does co-location hosting and what you do is you buy a mac mini one of those little computers and then you uh, you install linux on it and put all of your data on it and you mail it to them and then they co-locate it in racks. What do you think of the Mac Mini running Linux as a server? Uh, I mean, maybe for small projects, but other than that, I would rather go with like standard uh, server hardware instead of a Mac Mini. It's yeah. really built for uh, running twenty-four-seven. Uh, yeah, yeah. It looks like. I mean, I, I would think they'd fall apart. I mean, to me, the Mac stuff is all you know, sexy instead of good. You know, that Richard Stallman said that. Uh, Steve Jobs made jail cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. I'm <laughs> yep. Well, cool. You got any uh, anything else to add here before we get someone else on? Um, yeah, just maybe that I think it's really important to consider that uh, privacy is uh, necessary for liberty and that it's not granted, but you have to take it yourself. So. That's why I became a privacy extremist and wear a mask in public. Yeah. Well, hit me up on uh, Pigeon sometime, and we'll get you on the uh, Anarchy Gumbo podcast and do an hour with you sometime. Sure. Cool, man. Cool. Appreciate it. I hand you over to the next one, okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Peace. Who's up next here at Libertopia Live on the Street? Let's have a woman. We have a woman on the street, or is it going to be all men on the street? Is there a woman he's asking? Yeah. Yeah, we have we have a Freedom Fiend sausage fest going on here. I know. Oh yeah. Um so was it Jennifer? Jen yeah. Jen from Cop Block is gonna be here later. Okay. okay. That's that's C O P yeah. That sounds like a girl's name. Put her on. Is she there? <laughs> no, I think where, she's where be is here she later. anyway? Yeah, yeah, she's gonna be here later, right? Where's Jillian? Yeah. Is Jillian there? Jillian's handing out Jill- fiend sticker buttons. Uh Jillian. You seen Jillian? Oh yeah, she'll be up here later. Who's this? Ross? Is this Jeff? Jeff. Um, hi. You, t- you gonna talk, Jeff? Yeah. Are, am, am I live? Yeah. yeah what's your What's live. your last name, Jeff? Lim. L I M. L I M. All right. How do you like? Yeah. Uh, what are you doing there? Are you a participant? Are you just? What are you doing there? Are you speaking or hanging out or I'm what? I'm not speaking. This is my first time going to a libertarian gathering. I'm here. Good. You no, know, I'm, I'm technically we, here. We, on biz- we actually are more interested in talking with someone who's at their first Liberty Fest that isn't a speaker than we are with all these rock stars. Because I want to hear oh, man on the street. I mean, I actually told uh, told them that when picking people out. So what do, you, what do you do and how'd you end up there and what do you think of it? So I came here because of a referral from some friends on Facebook, none of whom are actually here. But Where do you um, live? Can San I ask? Francisco. Uh, are you from yeah. MIT? Is that that, Jeffrey? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm adding you as a you, friend on Facebook right now. Oh, nice. How, how are you finding out this information? Are you looking at some database? and? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm from the government, and I'm here to yeah, help yeah, it's you. Yeah, it's your voice. Oh, yeah. We've got an algorithm <laughs> that defines nice. it by your voice. Well, yeah. that seagull that just went by is actually a robot drone with a camera, so we <laughs> facial recognized you. <laughs> of course. Yep. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm here to you know, meet some, some people interested in um, 
and you know taking business into the peer to peer realm. I mean that's sort of what I'm interested in. I'm um, I'm, I'm here in California for a couple of years in order to try some entrepreneurship, um, and you know I've never been to a freedom oriented event before. I thought like um, you know here I meet some people who are not just interested in um, in in solely entrepreneurship for its own sake, but entrepreneurship for the sake of you know of promoting individual um, individual autonomy. Well, I'm really curious and interested in that too. Uh, oh crap! Uh, well, we're we, going got, into we a actually have some commerce to do oh, here. We're going to uh, keep you around. Do you want to hang out with us? Yeah, go ahead and hang out with us uh, during the break, and we'll we'll have you back on after that. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Freedom Fiends live from Libertopia with the "Don't Tread on Meme" cats pulling people in off the street and putting them on the air. Yeah. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are we live, Nima? We live from yeah, Libertopia. We're, totally live, man. we're talking to uh, Jeff Lim here. Jeff Lim is at Libertopia in San Diego. How are you liking it, man? It's very interesting. Lots of interesting people, lots of new ideas, which can take a while to come to grips with. But, so, um, is, li- is Liberty a new idea to you? What, where are you at politically? Um, I, I've been involved in um, you know online Liberty communities for a while now. It was really since the. Uh, the 2007 eight financial crisis when I really got interested in this stuff. So, I mean, it's not a new thing to me. What's new to me is the idea of actually physically meeting people, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, like for, for the longest time has just been some, some troll on the internet. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, seeing these people face to face, it, it's uh, a lot more, um, a lot more dynamic than you can get from any online forum. Well, you can actually get some in person, actual physical freedom fiends buttons for free. Uh, the guys who are in, handed you the headset have buttons of our podcast and they'll give you a set of them for free it's your your parting gift when you're done on here oh thank you yeah so uh talk about this web of trust idea business idea that you are are developing yeah so i'm working on a website it's called endorster you can go there at www.endorster.net wait you still say endorser i mean (laughs) www.endorster oh oh you think I think I should say triple dub or double No, nobody says, yeah. nobody, <laughs> nobody says that anymore. Nobody says triple I, dub. I, 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 I kind of like triple dub. I don't know. It's it's catchy. It's Endorser.net, E-N-D-O-R-S-E-R.net. T-E-R. E-N-D-O-R-S-T-E-R, right? Yes, Endorster. Okay. Yes. Um, ah. so, so I just started this you know, a few months ago. And the goal is to get the individual to take back control of their online reputation. So right now, whenever you're trying to do some peer-to-peer business, you either have to simply, you know, take a stab in the dark and trust that the person that you're working with isn't some sort of, you know, sketchy Craigslist killer on the one hand or government sting agent on the other. Um, but th- this is, you know, trying to enable you to get reviews from people that you know, people that you've um, couch surfed or shared cars or any any sorts of peer to peer business, anything you've done pe- pe- with people them. to v- vouch for you, basically. Yes, that's correct. So it's based on the idea of a web of trust. You know, there's no, it's not like I am in the business of vetting you. It's that you are in the business of vetting the people in your network, and then this way you can you can hold people accountable to a certain extent for the things that they do, and um, and increase your flexibility in being able to engage in all sorts of peer to peer businesses. All and this would be and this would be confirmed that the person is who they say they are with some kind of double key uh, encryption or signature. Hmm. So 
That's I mean, an idea that's down down the pipeline. Uh-huh. So right now, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. A lot of the people in the, the sharing economy business, you know, like couchsurfing.org and uh, ride sharing and those, those sorts of things. It's not really heavy into the, the whole like strong crypto crowd. I mean, I do have some ideas in the back burner for uh, taking this into like a Bitcoin like um, server. So our service so that nobody has to trust me at all. Um, but for now, I'm just trying to keep it simple. So there's no uh, online, there's, there's no um, encryption involved. Well, I'll, I'll drop an idea on you. You can have that we've been discussing. Cool. We're not really, uh, we're not programmers or anything, but we're very interested in crypto anarchism. We've yeah. talked on the Freedom Fiends before about, um, like for instance, like how copyrights, patents, and trademarks, you know, we're, we're totally anti-IP. The only IP I kind of believe in is trademarks, but I don't think it should be enforced by government. Yeah. I think there's a way that you could, you know, you could have your Rolex watch and prove that it's a Rolex watch and not from, you know, not a copy by having some sort of trust signature with some company like yours verifying it. Right. You know, so you just so, like wave your Android phone over it and read the chip, read the little, uh, you know, Q, QR code on it or something, uh, you know, or a three dimensional holographic one that couldn't easily be replicated. <laughs> and yeah. you'd, you'd know it's a real Rolex or you'd know, you know, this is that this record actually came from this person. If you if you're interested in buying the MP3 from the person and not buying it, you know, copied from somebody. Yeah. I mean, so that's another application that when you're buying physical goods from someone, you need to trust them at least to the extent that you don't know what, exactly what those goods are until they arrive, you know. So all the sort of information asymmetry problems are things I'm hoping to address. But it's interesting that you should stay, um, you know, in, in uh, verifying your identity because, um, you know, it's one of, the, uh, one of the sort of uses to which Facebook and LinkedIn and sorts of things are, are sort of forced into having to serve this role of verifying your identity. But that's not really what they're for. Um, you could create a fake Facebook account. You could do whatever you want. Um, so um, it's just another future thing that um, that you know is going to come down the line is to to verify your identity without linking it to your actual identity. If that makes any sense. So, yeah. So it'd be anonymous. Um, like say, uh, I don't even want to use the example of a prostitute. Uh, well, let's say prostitute okay. in a country where prostitution is legal. You know, a prostitute yeah. who delivers a good service people like what she does but she doesn't want her name and address findable because there might be someone stalking her right uh yeah you so know, she, has, so, she has a nom de poon so a nom de poon so <laughs> would would it would your system allow for being anonymous yet verifiable yes that's um it's very much at the core of what i'm doing that i don't ask for anyone's email address or um or facebook account and i mean you can create a million account well don't create a million accounts so they don't have the service space for that but you can create as many accounts as you want, or as many names as you want, and it's up to you to manage which names you use for which purposes. So, I believe some of the the, the people that you just talked to earlier, the the uh, the masked vigilantes. I know who they. Should, I know who they yeah. really are. I know who they really Uh-oh. are. But go on. Well, um, you know, have to watch out. But, uh, <laughs> so, um, well, I'm in their I mean, circle. I'm in their circle of trust, and we verified yeah. with voices over and over pigeon, and we know, you know, that's how we yeah. did it. But that's not well, distributed. Well, basically, what it would be verifying is that the the online identity, whatever it is, whether or not it's tied to a real identity or not, that it's trustworthy. Right. And so you could be that prostitute, and you could get the reviews, and no one would know what those reviews are for, but they right. just and know. Then, and then you could have a second yeah. identity as a babysitter on, on right. Saturday nights. <laughs> and I mean, fundamentally yeah. it's the same thing, you know, fundamentally it's about being honest and trustworthy and whatever context you're in and having that information makes it um, that right. much easier to do business. What, what, what I worry about and what I wonder though is, cause we were thinking about this, uh, I think when we were discussing Silk Road actually is, um, mm. What about somebody who was, you know, an undercover cop or some kind of state functionary uh, who decided to do something like this and was really good for a while? You know, like they, they accumulated mm. like deep cover accumulated and then started selling feedback and then started selling poison as drugs or something or arresting yeah. people. Or, how would, yeah, how, would arresting people. how could you stop that with your system? How could you prevent mm. that? So, um, I mean, like, you know, fundamentally, it's not a, an easy problem to solve. It's like. You can always, uh, if you're willing to invest millions and billions of dollars into building a reputation in order to get one uh, one drug dealer, then then you know all the power to you. But, and they are um, because it's not their yeah. money, you know. Yeah, it's not yeah. their money. They steal they it. Care. But I mean, in, in comparison to the way that it exists, this uh, my service would at least allow people to um, 
to uh to have a little more trust than uh, than exists now like on the silk road not not that i know this because uh <laughs> but uh, on the silk road now the only way you can know that someone's not a government agent or the only way you can even suspect that they're not an agent is that they have a long record of doing drugs or whatever um but all that depends on the silk road um and if you want to become a new person then uh it's really hard to establish that so for me at least uh, my service allows you to take your reputation from one context and bring it into another in order to help you know make it easier for you to uh to start anew and start building your reputation there so i mean yeah it doesn't solve the problem it just it makes it lowers the uh, the barriers to entry in a lot of services mm-hmm. though mm-hmm. yeah cool Sounds so is good. it is it functional now like can we start using it i'm i'm on the website it says sign up like is yeah, I mean, work? it works. Like, there, there aren't a whole lot of features yet. I, I, I just launched a little while ago. Um, and you, you can poke around with it. And uh, if you have any questions or feedback, you can email me at info at endorser.net. How do you spell um, endorser? Endorser. It's her. E- yeah. E-N-D-O-R-S-T-E-R dot net. Yeah, E-N-D-O-R-S-T-E-R. T E R, yeah. yeah, I think you're missing the T, Michael. I, I have it in there, and it's saying Heroku, no such app. Yeah, you, so, want me, you, want, you want me to send you a link? Yeah, send me a link. Yeah, yeah that, that's why you need the www. Right? Oh. Ah, <laughs> this, ah. This, this, see, this, see. This, yeah, this is what you get for using free, uh, free services. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I see it. Okay. You got um, it now. Okay. Well, you should sign up for uh, for Hostgator then, and use our affiliate link because they're doing uh, great. Hostgator. We're we're having no problems with them, and they're twenty four seven available, and they're cheap. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, go to go to, freedom, go to freedomfiends.com and uh, there's a link over on the right. Well, it's been really yeah. good having you on here and yeah, uh, good Jeff good Jeff Lim. Yeah. And thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Worms. Right. Peace. Yeah. Go get your free uh, Freedom Fiends buttons from the guys that handed you the mic. Yeah. Have a good day. Thanks, man. All right. Yep. Bye. Live See? from Libertopia. Yeah. That's a, that's such a good idea, and it's Is that fun. Hang on. Up. Hang on, y'all. We're still on here. I'm hanging. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Yo, Yo, Freedom Fiends. Yo, Freedom Fiends. Live from Libertopia. Nima, where are you? Uh, Nima, where are you physically located right now? Physically, I'm in Austin, Texas. I am More physically in my in, windowless studio. In your windowless bunker media man cave. I'm in uh, yes. Casper, Wyoming. In my, I call it my windowless bunker, but it's actually got a window. I did a blog post with a nice panoramic view and an explanation of how to do nice panoramic photos on the Freedom Fiends blog. And uh, but we are virtually, not literally, but virtually. At Libertopia in San Diego by the beach watching pigeons poo on the money list. And uh, we got our first woman on the street interview. We've been doing all these sausage fest man on the street interviews here. But we got a lady here. It's uh, George Sand and from Cop Block. George. Yes. How you doing there, Hello. George? But she's still got a man's name. I'm doing great. Yes, I do still have a man's name. It's <laughs> yeah. kind of cheating. but Cop Block, man. We love Cop Block. Yeah, I'm a writer for Cop Block. I'm here at Humphreys Half Moon uh, Inn and Suites in San Diego. I can see the sailboats in the water from the hotel window. Um, it's a beautiful day. Tell us about your nom de plume. Why, why George? Why George Sand? You know, it was it was pretty random. You know, I'm not a particular fan of George Sand or anything. I just thought it was a cool name. My friend's uh, pen name is actually Kerr Bell, which is one of the Bronte sisters pen name and I thought hey I'll, I'll take on a pen name as well and George Sand just kind of a cool historical figure and she dated Chopin so I'm a huge fan of Chopin so I thought she was kind of <laughs> badass that way I mean she was kind of I think she was a socialist unfortunately but for her day she was kind of a badass because women weren't allowed to write and so she pu- published under a man's name and she's kind of a cool character overall but that's about it you're one is, of the main the writers at Cop Block right and longest running one of the long running ones right yeah, I'm kind of uh, one of the longer running ones. I remember OG. when I first saw an original, yeah, jo- an original, an original George. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, original George. Um, I remember I first I saw uh, when Cop Block was first started by Ademo. He put out a, a tweet, and I was like, "Wow, this organization has a really cool name." Um, so I reached out to him. I sent him a couple of links to my articles, and I said, "Hey, I'm kind of writing about police brutality as well. Check me out." And he said, um, you know, I'm just getting cop block started. It would be great to have a few writers on board. And so that's when I started in, I think, early early 2010. Ademo's out of prison now or jail now, right? This week? He sure is. He got out on Yay. Thursday, which is when Libertopia kicked off. And we were all really, really happy to hear that. Is he there? He is not here. Um, he's. I'm sure he's busy doing... Uh, Liberty Blocking things cops. as usual, but Blocking right, cops right. And getting his freak on. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. There's another organization called Cop Watch, and they're the they're the lefty ones, and the the anarcho capitalist one is Cop Block. We like that because it's more forceful. Right, and you know, Cop Watch <laughs> they they get annoyed with us a lot. We have a couple, you know, I, I don't know about recently, but at least um, when we first started, we had a few trolls from Cop Watch who would. You know, look at our Facebook page every day and call us copycats and not the real thing and copycats. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, they want to have a monopoly. That sounds very uh, leftist to me. Right, very right. Statist. And In they fact, want they like even, they want to like fix the cops, whereas Cop Block just thinks yeah. we don't need them. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, that's with, probably with, with the main difference. Watch, who watches the watchers, right? They probably just want layers and layers of people. You can't, to, you you know, can't more, fix more the cops, man. I mean, think no, about the Rodney can't. King thing. The Rodney King thing was the first, like, real cop block, cop watch kind of thing before those organizations existed. And it, like, it made international news, and the LAPD are more corrupt than ever. You know, it didn't fix anything. It got a right, couple right. cops, you know, slapped on the hand, and that's it. I mean, the whole system is set up to favor uh, cops. So, you know, they have various degrees of immunity. And, you know, their lives are treated as more important than ours. For instance, you know, you assault me, you just, that, that's regular assault. You assault a police officer, that's assault slash battery on a police officer, which carries a heavier sentence. And certainly if you kill me, same thing. You, you mm. killed me, whatever. That's homicide. But uh, Officer it, safety is primary. They, and if they a are right, the anointed right. class. If a cop assaults you, he gets a paid vacation. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. He still okay. gets paid. How's Libertopia? Oh, Libertopia has been fantastic. We've all had a really good time. It's just been a great weekend, and it flew by so fast. I mean, um, you know, it started Thursday, and it's now Sunday, but I, I feel like it went by in a blink of an eye. Is, is a there a bunch of things. private security instead of cops, or are there San Diego police patrolling the perimeters? Um, you know, actually, I haven't wandered outside of the perimeter too much since I've been here, but there have been no cops on the grounds. Uh, last year, there a couple of cops walked through. Uh, and they stopped by and picked up a card from the cop block uh, table last year, actually. <laughs> They're bigger but, trolls. Yeah, you ever, the police one are the real trolls on cop block, man. Oh, yeah. That's oh, the, my gosh. The, the I cops are great. Those guys. Website. Yeah. Yeah, so there's no cops there, so it must be chaos and uh, people being murdered, raped, assaulted nonstop. Yeah. And there How must many be children. rapes have you seen? <laughs> and there must be children working in coal mines and grandma can't get her medicine, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, it's total anarchy here, you know, without the cops. I am I am personally witnessing the downfall of society. Everything's just falling apart. Um no, but but it's it's been great. Is is someone drinking mead from Stefan Molyneux's skull yet? <laughs> <laughs> Some Vikings, no, some Vikings. Stefan used karate committed. to defend himself from the attack. <laughs> no, that would mean oh, he had a bad childhood. <laughs> I wasn't aware Stefan knew karate. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan hates karate. Stefan uh we love I don't know if he hates karate. We love everything he does except when he talks about people's what they do. Uh he basically said I took him to task for saying that if you're into BDSM it means you had a bad childhood and then he I was the only person who complained because you know it doesn't have the installed um base of people that will defend it publicly the way that you know other things do but then he went after karate and said if you practice martial arts you had a bad childhood and he got hundreds of people criticizing him. Oh really? Wait, so that's you're saying that's his theory? It, yeah, his his he, theory. He said it. We 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 were just not my theory for it. Yeah, we're we're just. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, is the reason cop blockers go by pen names uh, to prevent some sort of retaliation from uh, the cops as far as you know um, harassment? You know, I, I'm sure that is a concern. Uh, on the other hand, there aren't that many cops that, you know, we have police one that trolls us, obviously, but, I, you know, I don't feel like... But, but you're, you're not on the SPLC watch list yet. 
I don't know what that is. But I sure hope <laughs> you're not. No, you're, no, you're nobody until you're on the SPLC watch list. You will be on the SPLC watch list because you guys are oh, somebody. Oh, great. That's the Southern <laughs> Poverty Law Center, which started about oh. 20 years ago as, you know, they, they were amassing a database publicly of, you know, violent neo-Nazi groups. And then they expanded it to constitutionalists, libertarians, peaceful gun owners, etc. You're freaking kidding me. Wow. Nope. That's and he- Henry Rollins donates a lot of money to them, which is hmm. interesting. Well, I don't want to bring you into all our beefs here. Tell us more good about liber- <laughs> Libertopia. Yeah, there you go. Um, Nima, turn up a little really bit, Nima. Weekend. Okay, I think I'll just cl- get closer to the mic. Sorry. Um, yeah, go on. Sorry, George. Libertopia. George. Oh, no problem. Um, no, just been as, as good as it was last year, a really good time. Um, people are just drinking, socializing, learning a lot. Um, I've been manning the cop block booth pretty much the whole weekend, so I didn't go to as many of the uh, little le- lectures they have in the rooms as I would have liked to. Um, but other people have, and just a great variety of people here. Everybody's having a good time. I would has really, has really the cop block people. booth been pretty popular there? I know my little brother loves cop block, and uh, we went down to 6th Street the other month when he was in down Austin. visiting. And uh, yeah, down in Austin, where all the bars are, and he was showing everybody his shirt, saying, "Hey, check out Cop Block," and he was showing it to the cops, like, "Hey, you guys suck." You know, I don't think he said that. But he was he was saying, <laughs> right, right. you know, you guys you guys should check out this website; it's really cool. Um, has, has the the booth there uh, at Libertopia lot lot of traffic or what? Yeah, we've gotten a decent amount of traffic, and it's been really uh, encouraging and refreshing to see people who have heard of Cop Block. So, I mean. Last year as well, there were people who were like, oh, yeah, I read your website. I know who you guys are. But I feel like this year, even more people, because I always start out the conversation when people walk up, you know, have you heard of copblock.org? And this year, I would say um, much more people were like, oh, yeah, of course, I've heard of you. We've read your website. And so that's really encouraging to hear and really glad we're getting the message out there. So that's very exciting. Do you want to say hi to Frank Fidati? He's a big fan of Copblock. Yeah, he would be happy about that. Yeah, I would love to. Just say hi. Hi Frank. Hi Frank everybody. I'm really glad you read coplock.org. We support uh we really really um appreciate your support and readership. Yeah, and he's uh written an article for Coplock which uh when Pete gets back he said he put it on. Well, we're going into a uh, break here. It's been really good having you on here George Sand from coplock.org. Thank you for having me. And uh you're you're wearing a gunsandweed.com button, aren't you? I am wearing one right now. <laughs> I can see it. Hold it up to the mic. All right. Here, there we are. Yeah, I'm holding it up to the mic so <laughs> can see. We can see it with our ears like Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot for coming on. All right. Thank you for having me. You guys have a great rest of the weekend. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. Streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. The Freedom Fiends Agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at nageradio.com. That's nageradio.com. The Freedom Fiends from freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends live here. We are at Libertopia virtually and there are actual people here at Libertopia. How are you doing today, Nima? Doing good, man. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I wish I was at Libertopia, but I've got a few beers here. I'm in Austin. It's not, yeah, they, not so bad. Austin's they would, pretty nice. They wouldn't let you bring bring your guns. I want to get the uh, person that runs Libertopia on here, too, but right now we got uh, Ernie Hancock. Well, are, are, are people carrying their guns anyway, man? Well, let's ask Ernie Hancock from Freedom's Phoenix. He's on here, and he claims he's going to talk for four minutes. I don't think that's possible to yes, only hit, have can. him. All right. Clock's running. What's up, Ernie? Well, you know, last year we were carrying our guns openly, but they changed a bunch of the laws then or whatever. And this year we made our point last year, this year, I don't care, whatever. You know, it's <laughs> in the hotel room. They, they can come get it. But the um, I tell you, you know, the, the thing that's happened at Libertopia, I'm really glad, Sky Conway that uh, is the prime director here. And he uh, has brought together a lot of the old and the new volunteerist movement and everybody gets to hang and meet with each other and the presentations and we all get to see just how 
you know, how tight the movement really is. And, you know, as a lot of people coming in new, they'll see it as small. But, you know, for those of us that have been around, it's like uh, we're excited. We get a dozen people to show up for something. All of a sudden you get hundreds of people and we're like, woohoo. And they go, there's only 300 people here. And we're going, God, man, where you been? You know, this is so it's representative of just a lot of things. And I tell you, the common theme is, is that it's not to fix anything. It's just to survive it and thrive in it and and last and breathe in and out longer than the bad guys. And <laughs> and with the knowledge uh, that we have, I, I think we can do that. There's a lot of expatriation talk, this uh, patriotism, nationalism, pieces of pay, like uh, Butler Schaefer's presentation. He goes, yeah, that constitution is that piece of paper that prevents the government from doing all the stuff that it does. And <laughs> I love you know, Butler Schaefer. He's <clears throat> awesome. So it's just it, 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 the attitude here. We're really excited. I, I, my presentation was on our new uh, battery project. But, you know, I, I created a lab at my home in the barn that I have, and I'm growing nanotubes to facilitate a, a higher energy density in nickel iron batteries. And the thing is, everybody's like, oh, wow, this is such a cool project. And I'm going, you have to understand, it's not that that is what is so important. It's the atmosphere, the, the uh, idea that uh, you can just go to your garage and Generation Next and just figure this out themselves and quit waiting on everybody else. You know, Eisenhower gave this speech and everybody uh, equates it to this military industrial complex thing. But if you read it, he was like, or watch it, he was, that was just a side effect of a being ruled by a scientific technological elite of the state and you know, going out and recruiting all the bright minds in service of the state instead of for themselves or freedom. So we need to counter that with, man, you don't need to be doing this. This is, your, you know, the evil empire of. And that's already started to happen. Just in the last six weeks of me really pushing what I've been doing and the last two editions of the e-zine, yeah, go to freedomsphoenixezine.com and uh, you'll see what we're doing there. And I tell you, you know, when I first saw, there's a movie, it's called Thrive, and it was a Thrive movement, and we got Foster Gamble here. I'm going I'm to turn it over to him in just a minute. All right. Uh, this is a real treat for you guys. But what Foster did, he was from the Procter & Gamble family. He had some resources, and he was asking, you know, what's the truth? And as I got to know him and watched the film and interviewed him and so on, and he's written for the easing, what happened was it was his son that introduced him to Austrian economics, and all of a sudden, Oh, now's the time to pull the trigger and make the movie because I get it. Before, you know, the elite family thing, you'd tell her just dysfunctional. I mean, they got this elite, arrogant mentality of we not only can we rule you, in fact, we should as a favor to you, you know. And <laughs> so it's, as time goes on, you start to realize that, wow, not only can we take care of ourselves, we can do it a hell of a lot better. And yeah. this uh, Thrive movement really focuses around on energy. Oh, and he should break some news. You're going to break some Kentucky news? You want to do that a little bit, a little bit? Come on, give him a little, 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 little. Anyway, you can ask him about it. But All right. They, they, Put him you know, on. The big that, that powers that be, they do not want us to be able to be independent of the grid because, you know, then you're not dependent on them. And declaring your independence is being independent. And I'm telling you, man, this is what he is all about and what I think we should strive to be in food production and energy production and, you know, ignoring them production. Because I'm telling you, it's already started and I'm just doing everything I can to help facilitate. I'm going to put Foster on so you get a, a good out of him. Thank Foster you. Foster Gamble from Fry. Yeah, your freedom. Hi there. Foster hey. Here. hey, Foster. How you doing? Love your movie. Uh, what, I was going to have you introduce it, but uh, Ernie did, and everyone's already seen it anyway because it's great and it's popular. Uh, how you liking Libertopia? And I'm going to link it, by the way, here on the Freedom Fiends. How you liking Libertopia? Hello? Foster? Foster. <laughs> Hello? Uh, the energy machine overpowered the phone. Is apparently. he there? Is he can there? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Foster. Okay, great. I guess I didn't have something in my headset for you. Ah, uh, okay. We thought that right. uh, we thought the central scrutinizer cut you off there. Uh, so I was going <laughs> to say, yet. you know, everyone's seen the movie. Everyone hasn't. And if they haven't, I'm going to I'm gonna link it. Thrive, the thrivemovement.com. Thrivemovement.com. And uh, Ernie just explained the whole thing. So how are you liking Libertopia? <laughs> Ernie's the only guy I know who can explain that movie in a minute. Well, <laughs> Ernie, Ernie said he was only going to talk for four minutes. And I'm like, that's never happened. That's but right. He talked for about five, so we got about four for you before the break here. We can have you on more after if we need to. So, uh, 
So, so how are you liking Libertopia? So I'm having a, a, such a great time just talking with people who are really willing to think for themselves. As you probably know, it's uh, it's not easy to find a lot of people like that out there in the world these days with the level of indoctrination uh, and duping that is going on, particularly in, the, in an election season. So uh, it was really exciting to be able to present the movie here. We had a great reception and, and a dynamic conversation afterward. It was the first uh, presentation where I didn't really have to try to explain what the liberty concept uh, was. Um, and it's just amazing to see all the things that people are doing in different sectors, you know, from business to science to art, um, but all with this fundamental understanding that it's not okay to violate anyone else except in self-defense. I mean, it seems so obvious, but it's really the, the punchline of the entire Thrive movie after we reveal you know, what's going on behind the curtain in the world of science, in the world of, of economics, and we follow the money in all these different sectors. But once we get down to solutions, there are, you know, there's a, uh, almost countless issues, but they're all human made, and they're all fundamentally made by this misunderstanding that some people should rule others. So for me to, to be in a place where so many people understand that and are doing dynamic, courageous work out in the world is just an absolute thrill. Are you a gun guy? Well, I, which is what you mean. I don't like to shoot them at people unless I have to, but I am definitely in favor of people having them for self-protection, absolutely. Do you know about this guy, Cody Wilson, who's trying to make a printable gun in, uh, in Austin? Yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I saw, saw the video on that one. It's pretty awesome. He got his uh, printer that he was leasing taken away, so uh, we've been looking for a a well-off uh, libertarian to buy him a printer. If you wanted to do that, I think you'd get uh, Santa would give you some some special uh, points good there. Karma. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, send send me a link on that, and I'll okay. I'll check it check it out more. What uh, Ernie was referring to before, uh, I can't say a whole lot about it yet, but there is a uh, an inventor in Kentucky who was uh, who was successful in adapting uh, a previous technology that hadn't been quite successful in tapping free energy uh he uh, we're, we're going in we're going into a okay. commercial right now but what you want to stay on for after the commercial yeah. in a couple minutes That's sure great. i'll just wrap that up when you come back all right here we are libertopia live freedom fiends and we're talking to uh you, you stick around we're going to talk to foster gamble from the thrive movement right after this since time began tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Freedom Fiends live here. How you doing, Nima? Yeah. Doing good, man. How are you? I'm great. We got Foster Gamble on. Foster Gamble made a movie. What's up, Foster? It's the Thrive movie. Yeah, I just wanted to finish what I was saying before about this. I can't say a whole lot of details yet, but this is just a great example of, you know, the, the philosophy that we're all interested in. The, uh, Ernie was mentioning the free energy, and there's an inventor uh, in the Midwest who uh, had a successful device, a small device, running his home for three and a half months. And uh, he, he made three more of them, gave them to friends. They're running their homes off of these things. And he made the mistake of, of prematurely putting up a, a video of the whole thing on YouTube. The first couple of hours, he had over 800,000 hits. And uh, a few hours later, he had the NSA in his driveway. And they're shutting him down and trying to seize all the, the equipment. They cut off his credit cards uh, yesterday morning. They've got his son in custody. And it's just an example. I, I, as I'm allowed to say more, because I'm in, in conversation now with top-level attorneys who are good at handling this kind of injustice and uh when the time is right i'll be back in touch with you guys to help get the word out to protect this guy 
he's a very courageous guy and he said no matter what they do to him, he won't give up these other uh, people and he has already disseminated the the information to multiple hard uh, other hard drives so if this is really the first one I've seen of these since Thrive came out. I was familiar with a number of them that had happened previously, but now we've got the, the internet and so many people aware of fundamental freedom issues that this could really be a catalytic case to, to finally get free energy out into the world. So I'll keep is you the posted. video still up on YouTube? Can, can we still check that out? Uh, well, no, he said that he had, that he had to take it down. I don't know whether there are uh, other copies available or, or not. I'll keep you posted and let you know as soon as I hear anything on that. And so what you're saying is is this guy was running his entire house on some small device that he built? Right. It's huh. a success, successful free energy device. He adapted a, a, a previously unsuccessful one that someone else had done. He actually said he saw the Thrive movie and all of a sudden got the insight of how to tweak this device. And all of a sudden the thing was working and running his house. Could we get like details on that? Like that sounds like something everybody should have no, this, you know, access is, to the, the information. Is, yeah, it's huge. But I want to get the advice of these lawyers, you know, just like he shouldn't have put it on YouTube before these devices were all over the place and he had appropriate security and legal uh -huh. protection and everything. Uh, I don't want to say any more specifically about it uh, until the lawyers uh, advise that it, it's the right time to do okay. it because these guys are very experienced. There's no way like somebody else could like post it. It seems like if we all had access to that, like, I mean, there's not enough NSA agents to come get us all right. I mean, if everybody had that at once, exactly, uh, wouldn't the problem be solved? Well, I think so, and that, but I, I don't. I'm going to make sure not to violate what, you know his plan on this. But I think that was his original intention. I uh, he just was a little uh, naive about how quickly they would come down on him if he went public at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Mr. Gamble, I, w I wanted to ask you something. I, I have a. Um a favorite podcaster of mine, uh, his name's Ben Stone, um, and he's kind of got some issues with, uh, I guess, the Thrive Movement uh, and the Thrive Movie, and I was wondering if you would be uh, okay with addressing some of those concerns of, of his. I know he's not here with us, but uh, sure, I'd like I'd be to paraphrase him and, and go ahead and ask you. Sure. Um, well, he's under the impression, um, I haven't seen the Thrive Movie, so I'm kind of an intermediary here, and I can't really okay. make a judgment one way or the other, um, but in, in his view... Uh, it's like the Thrive Movement isn't calling necessarily for uh, true uh, free market or Austrian economics, but it's more of a, a greenbacker thing to where it's it's tied to wanting the Congress uh, to run the money supply, the fiat money system, as opposed to um, having the Federal Reserve do it. Uh, no, that's inaccurate. Uh, one of the the, uh, the the punchline of the entire film is a, a totally free society where no one has authority over anyone else. Um, okay. what, what we do do is propose a three-stage strategy. The main thing I have found lacking from Libertopia so far is that there are a lot of brilliant people who uh, on the philosophy and a lot of brilliant people on what a free world could look like, but hardly any discussion, discussions, uh, and I've heard no talks so far yet, on, on real competent strategy, I mean thorough comprehensive strategies of right. how to transition from here to there. So we propose a three-stage strategy that acknowledges that uh, as we're going toward a totally free society, we can we, we're going to be moving through minarchy on the way, and we can and there's a lot of people who really would be in disastrous shape. You know, billions of people if uh, if the government system disappeared tomorrow. So what we're recommending is the same thing that that Rothbard suggested, which is keep the goal in mind. Don't create any, any new violations along the way, but shrink the government down to ultimately. You know, to to nothing. But in the meantime, take care of, of the people who are truly desperate, who've been most disenfranchised by the, the system, but not with with new taxes, but by uh, cutting the military budget in half and, and getting rid of the interest to the Federal Reserve. Um, and I personally am not in, in favor of uh, giving the money making back to Congress at all. I'm, I'm personally in favor of uh, just a complete free market on currency immediately because, okay. you know, it's we're in collapse anyway. But anyway, there's a three-stage right. strategy that honors some of the core ethics of the of both the liberal and conservative agendas, the best of that, but transcends them all. You know, something so, I saw this weekend that I thought was really interesting was the they were taking the uh, the space shuttle to the museum in L.A. and they had a lot of photos of it and video of it on the news and on the internet, and it was like being taken like some Soviet, you know, it, looked, it reminded me of like a Soviet military parade, taking it through these neighborhoods in LA, these really poor neighborhoods in LA. And all these really poor pe people were out like cheering, like, yay, yay, America. And I'm thinking you're cheering the reason you're poor, you know? 
<laughs> well, well, it's kind of ironic. It is. Yeah. It is. I, I do want to. Can you tell us a little bit more about the three step solution? Because you're right. We don't often talk about solutions. We kind of just assume that the idea is eventually everybody gets the idea. They understand the non aggression principle. They understand how anarchy is obviously a better system than statism. Yeah. Um, what are some of the, uh, I guess, in the simplest, shortest form you can give us, what are the three yeah. steps? First of all, I recommend that anybody who's interested in this go to thrivemovement.com and then go to the solutions hub. Because uh, we just put this up two months ago, and it's got all the best tools we know to recommend. And it fundamentally is a tool to hook together uh, groups that are working on uh, uh, liberty-based solutions worldwide, whether it's chemtrails or fluoride or, uh, or, or justice systems or, or whatever it is. Um, because we're very clear that, that what's not needed is a centralized solutions uh, control mechanism. Uh, for the world, but really the empowerment of people to to do their own solutions, but to be able to link together effectively so that they can share uh, uh, petitions and flyers and uh, you know class action lawsuits or wh whatever uh, is being effective, they can all learn from each other. So we put that hub up about two months ago, and where there's already over 350 groups that have signed up from around the world and are now sharing best practices with each other, and it's growing you know fast every day. So that's an example of the kind of decentralized, unstoppable solutions movement. And the only two things that we ask of people when they sign up on, the, on this network is one, that if they uh, are working with what we call sectors, whether it's you know, environment, education, arts, spirituality, economics, so forth, uh, that they use the same sector name so we can coordinate uh, worldwide. But secondly, is that any solutions that they have do not create any new violations. And so everybody who's signing up is, is signing up with those two uh, agreements, and it's uh, growing fast. And, and as that kind of movement grows and links together uh, with other movements, I, I really think that helps this whole thing be unstoppable. Do you worry that working within the system, though, it's inevitable uh, that you'll create, somebody will create new violations? I mean, you can't really take hold of the government as it is now or uh, work within the confines of the status system without uh, using the statists um, means of, of doing things, you know, um, being in Congress, signing petitions, uh, voting, all things that are sort of, uh, since they support the system, they are in part aggression because uh, they are supporting an aggressive system. Yeah, well, I, I certainly wouldn't ever hold my breath for the state solving the problems of the state. Um, right. In the mean, in the meantime, if somebody like you know Ron Paul or Dennis Kucinich who actually is honest and, and is uh, you know willing to risk their lives to shut down the Federal Reserve uh, or stop wars of aggression and that kind of thing, um, I I think that in my experience of a lifetime of activism, it takes all different sorts of, of and styles of uh, actions to actually turn the thing around. You know, it takes the right. Black Panthers and a Martin Luther King, uh, right. and and many and many many more. So if, if anybody who's involved in our network is actually creating uh, new violations, then it will at least bring up the discussion and yep. we'll either, you know, alter it or ask them to, uh, to not be a, a, part of the, a part of the movement that would be misrepresenting what we're up to. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun right, and Rifle uh, with Jared here. Waltz. Um, First rule of being alive actually, we've got you one more thing yourself. I almost want to keep you on, but I'm wondering if you'd be willing a to do a, a full approach to firearms and point. self. You're listening to the Freedom Fiends podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's f r e e d o m f e e n s dot com. Back here on Freedom Fiends live. From yeah. Lumatopia, and we've got a special friend of the fiends here with us now. Last guest of the day. Last guest of the day. Save the best for last. We got Jillian from Stateless Sweets. How you doing, Jillian? I'm wonderful. How are you, Michael? <laughs> We're yeah, frisky. Yeah. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> yeah. Talk, speak a little louder if you can, or a little closer to the mic. You're a little quiet there. Have you seen any birds masturbating there today? Jillian? I think she fainted. Did, did Well... Uh, the the gamble guy was having problems with that too. Foster Gamble, like, yeah. I guess. Try pressing stuff. Press buttons on your your earpiece. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed to have pressed something in, and all of a sudden it started. Yeah. Working. 
Hmm. Maybe it was his magic energy. His free energy came to Are you there, Jillian? And made it work. Jillian, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Maybe we should just talk about Jillian until she comes back on. She's great. She okay. runs Stateless Sweets. They make yummy stuff that I can't eat because I'm on a diet. But uh, <laughs> but it's stateless. That's the key, right? That's the key. Yeah. It's, yeah. It doesn't have any state calories. Yeah. <laughs> Jillian, you there? Oh, I, I can kind of hear her a little bit. Jillian? Turn your volume up if you can. Yo, yo. Yo. Jillian. Jillian. Yo. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Well, I should call Drew and tell him to fix this. Yeah. So talk a little about... Uh, Jillian and uh, what she's been facing while I get someone on the phone to get her on here. I'd love her to talk about herself, but from what I know, she was uh, driving cross country, um, got harassed by Texas cops on I-10, uh, which the I-10 corridor is pretty horrible when you get to the border checkpoints, especially near El Paso, which they have this little you know border checkpoint. And if they want to harass you, man, they're, they're going to go for it. They uh, The same cops, same county uh, that harassed Willie Nelson. Uh, Snoop Doggy Dog, um, you know nobody can out outrun the grasp of these evil statists, and they caught Jillian, unfortunately. And so uh, the fiends did a little donation drive and and tried to help her out as best we could. And um, I'd love to know more about what's going on with it now. I think she's still there, has charges you there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, ah, we, hear you we now. can hear you. Oh, yeah. you hear me now. Yeah. So what's what's going on with your uh, the the status down in Texas harassing you? Are they still harassing you? Great question. Uh, well, I've been calling my bail bondsman every week, just letting her know I haven't run off to I guess Mexico or something. Um, <laughs> right. But I actually you, have, you haven't gone to a freer country. Yet. You're still here <laughs> not, in the yeah. Not quite yet. Uh, but yeah, they haven't sent me anything uh, in the mail yet. It said four to six months. So four months is coming up tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe they're really unorganized. There's there's some that warrant that, I have that could floating help. around. Yeah, yeah. There's some warrant I have floating around in Texas in this small little like neighborhood police force. And uh, I went there to like talk to them about it once, and they didn't have computers. They just had a bunch of boxes with pieces of paper <laughs> with the tickets written on them. And right. I'm hoping that they just lost it because like I haven't had my driver's license denied or anything like that yet. So right. maybe you'll get lucky, and maybe they're just that incompetent that they'll forget about you. <laughs> I'm actually thinking they're sadly just that busy. Because uh, when when yeah, I when I was uh, yeah when I was stopped at that checkpoint, um, there was like three other people with California really? plates, yeah, that had gotten taken out of their car at the same time. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I know Fiona Fiona Apple got stopped there a couple weeks ago too. So oh, did she? Oh, yeah, so uh, they yeah, have they're, all they're of bastards, that. man. Anytime I drive into Texas from the west, which I've done often, I always avoid uh, I ten near near El Paso. I always. Uh, Go up to like Amarillo or something through New Mexico. Yeah, and yeah. Down. No, yeah Snoop Dogg <laughs> and uh, uh, who else got busted there? Snoop Dogg and Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson, Willie Nelson. on that same yeah. stretch of road, man. Yep. yep. So how's Libertopia? It was great. Uh, the first day we got here a little late around noon, so it was a little slow for us. But um, everybody's been coming by the booth and grabbing a bunch of candy and talking, and it's really nice to uh, just uh, having all like. The things that are going on on the main stage aren't really as exciting as just the uh, social interactions. That's how it always is at events. You know, it's like I don't, I don't want to hear a bunch of theorists and experts. I want to hang out with people and like build community. You know. Yeah. I can hear you can hear the theorists online any any time. You can read their books, you know, but you can't, you know, rub up against them. (laughs) Sure. Sure. Yep. You rubbing up against anybody there? <laughs> that, that's kind of personal. Um, just my husband for now. <laughs> my my goal is it, one of my goals in life is to make Jillian blush because I did it one time and it was great. I, it was like I can hear her blushing over the phone. We, we were talking about she was talking about birds masturbating and it was kind of an accident. It was like I was on. I wanted to test our Skype number when we first got it and I posted on facebook who's around and in front of a computer or can you know can call me and she said i am she's the first person and i said okay call this number and let me and then she called and i said okay i can hear you let me try recording this and see how it goes and she's like what should i do and i'm like i don't know read something and she read what was in front of her which was something a website about birds masturbating <laughs> And I recorded wait, 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 it. Wait, 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 wait. Birds can do that? Like, yes. I feel like all, all their Tell means us, of manipulating things are very sharp. Like, they have talons and beaks. Do you really want that on your junk? 
<laughs> they can rub on things. Oh, okay. Uh, how, how do birds know. masturbate, Jillian? I don't know how well I retain that information. I think Michael <laughs> is more fascinated about that than me. Yeah, but Michael, then, if you were a bird, how would you masturbate? But then a bunch of other girls on on Facebook, some people I know like Nikki and Emberly and a few other people uh, got in on. I mentioned that, and it yep. kind of became this thing that keeps coming up of like Jillian and her masturbating birds like it's a circus act or something. And every time I bless, yes. You don't I, actually, might see, I might pay to see that. I you don't, ha- you don't that. actually have masturbating birds, right? You just know they exist? I don't own any birds at all. No, I own dogs. Forget yeah. stateless sweets. It's all about the stateless beaks. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do a masturbating bird show. <laughs> well, tell us about stateless sweets and how people can find it and what it is. Sure. Um, Stateless Sweets is mainly an online agorist business right now. People can go to my website, www.statelesssweets.com. Um, you can order from there. I have a ton of new candy coming on the menu every day. I just uh, been in creative mode lately. So- what's, your favorite, what's your favorite Stateless Sweet? Describe it in very sensual detail so that we'll want to eat it. <laughs> You're talking to a married um- woman there. You know that, right? Sensual, like your senses, like your eyes, your nose, your mouth, ah, your lips, your tongue. Okay, good, senses, good. sensual. I didn't say sexual. <laughs> oh, I guess my favorite stateless sweet candy is probably the caramel. Uh, it sort of uh, melts in your mouth and it has real buttery flavors and vanilla and uh, really just nice to finish on it. It's not one of those chewy caramels where you get your uh-huh. teeth stuck in it. It's, uh-huh. a, it's, it's a nice experience. Do, 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 uh, do you have any salted caramel? I'm a big fan of caramel with like a little sea salt on top or like some smoky salt. Do you have anything like that? Oh, yeah. I actually uh, I made a ton of different kinds of caramels for Libertopia. Oh. I have salted caramels. I have uh, oh, yeah. some caramels that I called Friademo, salted almond caramels. When he, when he <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, he's locked up. yeah, and then I have chocolate caramels that I just came up with recently. It's just basically like a Tootsie Roll. But you know, better. My son's favorite thing on my menu currently. So okay. <laughs> you should have other candies that are named after uh, people in the liberty movement. I'm trying to do that. People got to give me ideas of who to do that after. So feel free if you uh, have anybody in mind to message me. You could have um, a, a, Mike, a Michael Dean smoked salmon candy. <laughs> uh, I think you should have a, a Cody Wilson printable sugar gun. <laughs> there you go. And you know you do for the and uh, for the next indeterminate period of time. If someone orders something of state stateless sweets, they will get some free Freedom Fiends buttons with the order, right? Yep, absolutely. I have, well, Until have a Stefan Molyneux karate belt, uh, gummy karate belt, <laughs> gummy karate belt. <laughs> yeah. How about a uh, a P- now? You wouldn't like anything with uh, Adam, would you? The other Adam, <laughs> Kokesh, Kokesh. Oh no, not really. Well, I'm Adam Coconut, <laughs> the act of Adam Coconut, Adam, Adam Coconut ma- Macaroon, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. I'm just gonna go <laughs> okay, ahead. And okay. Yeah, my mouth, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a sweet girl. We'll just yeah, stateless sweet, sweet girl. Stateless yeah. sweets. Stateless yeah. sweet girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Score, score. Well, um, we're coming up pretty close to the end here. Do you do you want to wrap it up? Do you have any uh, final thoughts on sweets or chocolate or the state or uh, liberty? Um, uh, <laughs> towards the end of my day here at Libertopia. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just wonderful seeing the uh, bunch of people in the community come together and uh, different ideas of everything that's interesting. Uh, everybody coming together and having actual uh, you know, debates about basically the same thing. <laughs> but it's, it's it's pretty fun. Thank you for having me on the show. Awesome. Yeah. Keep doing Thanks what you're for doing. being had. It's excellent. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Worms. All right. Peace. Bye. Well, that is the live Libertopia Freedom Fiends. That was pretty good, huh, Nima? Yeah, man. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I was I was kind of worried. We're always complaining about shows where there's too many people on, but uh, yeah, it was nice broken up into little sections and little pieces. It was like doing a bunch of anarchy gumbos, like short little bite-sized anarchy yeah. gumbos at once. It was fun. I'd love to do this from, uh, you know, remotely for Porkfest, but they don't have good internet there. That's one small advantage of doing something in Southern California. You know, you got the internets there. We'll figure something out, but we got to go. Peace. Yeah. Not that rural, you know, but, you know, with ruralism comes freedom. Rural juror. 
We're not saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the freedom fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.